guys, so I think I had mentioned in one of my earlier videos that I'm going to do quick, or maybe not so quick, um, recap video first before I upload the footage from my holidays. So, um, this is going to be me talking about my vacation in Croatia, so the first week of my vacation. Um, and it might get kind of long because I'm going I wanted to talk in detail about some of the stuff that I didn't necessarily have footage of, so... Um, just to give you a better idea of what I actually did in the holiday, because I didn't film everything, and I didn't do a lot of videos where I was explaining what was happening. So um, I will be uploading the actual video footage later on, and hopefully after watching this video, you'll be able to understand a little more what's going on in the um, footage. So you can look out for that. I just spent about the last like hour sorting out all the video clips and arranging them and stuff. So hopefully I'll be able to be uploading that fairly soon within the next couple of weeks. Anyway, um, so on Saturday, March 1st was when my holidays officially began, and on that day I took the train from Enbon to Paris. Um, I took the train directly to the airport, which you can do. It's a little more expensive than taking it into the city of Paris, but not a whole lot. Um, and so I like to do that when I'm just going to be flying somewhere, obviously, because then you don't have to Getting from central Paris to the airport can take like an hour depending on where you're coming from and stuff, so it takes a while. Um, I went directly to the airport. I stayed at a hotel near the airport, and a lot of those hotels will have a free shuttle from the airport to the hotel, so make sure if you're looking for a hotel there that you check if they have a shuttle. Um, so I just spent the night there. I didn't get to my hotel room until about 11 p.m., and I had to get up at 4.30 to get ready and go to the airport. I think my flight was at 7 in the morning. So I want, it took about a half hour to get from the hotel back to the airport. And I needed some time to get ready in the morning. So I got up at 4.30. I went to the airport. And first I flew to Vienna. Uh, there was three different legs of my flight. So I was flying to Dubrovnik, was my final destination in Croatia. But it's not a super popular destination. So... Um, First I flew to Vienna, and also when I checked in, they wouldn't let me check in for my last two legs. My first leg was with Air France, and the last two were with Croatian Airlines, and they don't work together, so when I checked in in Air France, they were like, oh, we can't check you in for your second two flights. So I was super nervous uh, for that whole first flight, because I was like, oh, what if I don't have time? The layover wasn't super long. It was like an hour or something, um, but it worked out okay. When I got to the airport in Vienna, I asked someone what I was supposed to do, and she told me to just go to the um, the gate and that I could check in there, and she was right. So I was a little worried that that was going to be like wrong, but I went to the gate, and she just checked me in for the next two flights. So that worked out really well, and I had a little extra time in at the gate in Vienna. Um, then I flew to Zagreb, which is the capital of Croatia, and I had a really short layover there. My flight actually got in a little earlier than it was supposed to, but I was still really close to missing it. Um, and actually, my parents flew from Detroit, or from Chicago to um, Zagreb. They had a layover somewhere else, but we had the same flight from Zagreb to Dubrovnik, so I was supposed to meet them in Zagreb. And when I went to get on the flight, they were saying, like, last call for the flight to Dubrovnik, and I was like, freaking out because they weren't there yet and I could see them in the security line and they were like way back in the security line and I was just at the gate and they were like saying it was last call for boarding so I told the guy at the boarding like oh my family is still in the security line like don't leave without them um, and then I guess they asked or someone told them they could move up in the security line because they did make it onto the flight. So it was funny because they had a uh, bus to take us from the gate to the actual plane. And so they got on the bus and then we like ended up staying on the bus for like 10 more minutes or something like they totally could have made it. Um, but yeah, so I met my dad and my stepmom there on the bus to go to the plane and it was really great to see them and know like that they were there, we were all there, and now we could like have our vacation together. So then we flew from Zagreb to Dubrovnik, and I slept on the plane because I had only slept like four hours the night before. Um, I slept on the plane, and I didn't wake up until we had actually landed. And when we stepped off the plane, it was like, I felt like I was in like a dream. Like we stepped off the plane and there's just mountains like everywhere. It was beautiful. I took one picture. Maybe I'll put it in right here for you guys. It was just 
breathtaking, like, because I hadn't been paying attention. I was, like, literally asleep until we, after we landed, so I didn't know till we stepped off the plane that there were so many mountains, um, and I was just super excited then at that point. I was like, wow, it's beautiful here. I hadn't even seen, like, the sea yet or anything, um, so then we had a driver to take us from the airport to our hotel room, and um, the hotel we stayed at was really nice. Um, my dad decided to get like a nicer hotel since we were just going to stay in one place. Uh, a lot of times when I travel with my dad and my stepmom, we like to go to lots of places. So we like cram it in and we spend more money on traveling to different places. So this time we just decided to spend the money on getting a nicer hotel room since we were staying in one place the whole time. Um, the hotel was super nice. And on that first day, we just went and explored this old city by ourselves. The old city was really like a five minute walk from our hotel. So it was super nice. Um, it was so cool when you stepped in there. Um, if you guys are Game of Thrones fans, they filmed a lot of Game of Thrones in this city because it's um, just very old feeling, medieval feeling, and it has super tall city walls. It's beautiful. Um, and I just felt like I was like in King's Landing when I walked into the city walls. It was so super cool. Um, on that first day, we just walked around. Um, we walked quite a bit. We went like all the way around the coast up past the old city. We found this hidden little lagoon with a little cave and the water was so blue and beautiful. Um, and there were cats everywhere in the city. Um, it's crazy. And I'm going to make a separate video just like about the cats too because I love cats. And there was a ton of cats. Um, most of them were pretty healthy and cute looking. There was a few that were like kind of mangy looking or like I saw like two that had like eye infections that were pretty gross, but most of them, especially in the old town, they looked really healthy. A lot of them were pregnant because um, it was March, so it's the beginning of like the mating season for cats in the spring and summer. Um, I was thinking like, oh, it would be so fun to come back in like a month and see all these little kittens everywhere. They'd be so cute. Um, so yeah, that was my, my first impression though was that it was beautiful. It's the most beautiful place I've ever been to. And um, there's it's just mountains next to the sea. It's gorgeous. Um, this is already seven minutes long. I might have to split this up into a couple different videos because I'm only on the first day. Um, so the second day we had a panoramic tour of Dubrovnik. And the guy that was our tour guide was actually the same who drove us from the airport to the hotel the day before. He was super friendly. His name was Dushka. Uh, and he was an older guy, and he actually had fought in the war, the homeland war in Croatia. If you don't know, Croatia had a war in the early 90s because they used to be part of Yugoslavia. So um, they had a war when they wanted independence from Yugoslavia, and um, he fought in the war there, so it was really interesting to hear his insights about Croatia and its history and Dubrovnik. He said he had gr like grown up in Dubrovnik and... Um, it was really interesting. Also, he spoke really good English, and almost everybody there spoke English. I didn't, hadn't known before going there that Croatians spoke pretty good English. Um, and so the tour, first he drove us up to the port area of the city, which is quite far from where we were staying, so we probably wouldn't have gone there on our own. There was a really beautiful big bridge that could cross the bay there. Um, after that, he drove us to the top of the mountain, which is right over the old city. And you had a great view of the mountains, the sea, and the old city from above. There's a cross at the top of the mountain, and he told us that um, Croatia is a predominantly Catholic country, which I also didn't know that before. Um, it's really cool having the guides because they tell you a lot of stuff that maybe you never would have like found out otherwise. Um, I mean, I guess you could look up online what religion is popular in Croatia, but um, I hadn't done any research on that kind of stuff before we went. Um, so after we went to the mountaintop, he took us back down to the old city for a walking tour, and he just showed us kind of some of the main sites, and we had already seen some of them but didn't know what they were. Um, there's a really big, cool fountain there called Onofrio's Fountain, and um, we went to the cathedral, just looking outside of it, and walked along the port, and um, it was really cool. He just told us a lot of quirky little things. Um, he pointed out that there's a statue of a saint everywhere, and uh, I think in English it's called St. Blaise, and he's like the patron saint of Dubrovnik. I don't remember what he said the name was in Croatian, but um, then after that you could notice the saint everywhere. He made some recommendations, like that we should go on the city walls the next day and that type of thing. Um, and then at the end he 
showed us some Game of Thrones stuff because I had mentioned that I liked Game of Thrones and he it was really cool. He took um he took us to some places where they had filmed Game of Thrones, told us what specific scenes were filmed in the different places. Um it was really cool and then we went into the Fort Lovrenek. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but um first of all it's beautiful. Um, there are so many stairs, not only in this fort, but in Dubrovnik in general. There's a lot of stairs because it's a mountainous region, um, and you have, like, old stuff. There's a ton of stairs. Um, and this fort particularly, they filmed a lot of Game of Thrones in the fort and in front of it. And he showed us where they filmed the Royal Wedding for Season 4, uh, which was pretty cool to see. I'm excited to watch that scene now and see if I recognize it. Um... And he just knew some little facts about Game of Thrones and stuff like that. So that was super interesting for me. Um, so yeah, uh, then after that, this second day was like our best day there, I think, um, for me. I really loved this day. Because at that time, when we finished that tour, it was still like only like 1 o'clock. Um, we got lunch somewhere. Oh, we got sandwiches. We bought sandwiches at a grocery store. And then we went for a walk. My dad and my stepmom had asked for one of the receptionists where to go running because they're runners and she told us there was like a seaside road where they could run that was blocked off from cars so we went over there um first we accidentally went down to this like old abandoned old abandoned hotel and it was kind of creepy and just dirty looking <laughs> um, but then we found the right path and there first of all there was cats everywhere on this path there was like little houses for the cats all along the path and there was cats all over the view was gorgeous there was no cars there um, except we saw, it used to be a road open to cars. Um, there was a guard railing, and one part, the guard railing was, like, knocked down into the cliff, and we looked over the cliff, and you could see, like, an old car down there that had, like, gone over the cliff and crashed. <laughs> it was really interesting. Um, I don't know if that's why they closed that road, but anyway, um, we went for that walk, and it was about two miles, uh, there and two miles back, so four miles total. We ate our sandwiches, like, uh, on a bench on the walk um, and then after that we went back to the hotel um, what else did we do and I think we went swimming in the no we didn't go to the pool um, I, it was a beautiful day out that day and the weather forecast that I had looked at said that it was going to be raining the whole time we were there and so you know you can never depend on what the weather's going to be like later and I love the ocean and it wasn't super hot when we were there. Like the hottest it got was like 63 or something. But I, we, I don't know. You, how many times are you going to be in Croatia? We were like, we should swim in the Adriatic Sea just to like say we did it. And it was so nice that day. We were like, it might not, we might not have a nicer day, so we should do it today. So we went and we swam in the ocean, uh, in the sea, and it was very cold. <laughs> uh, but we did it. And then this old lady like came up to us and like. Thought we were crazy, but she was like impressed. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Uh, after that, we went into the old city and for dinner. We had dinner and we went to an Irish um, pub that our tour guide had recommended. The Irish pub. We went there and my dad ordered beer and um, not familiar with liters. Uh, we accidentally ordered a three liter thing of beer, like this huge thing. So we had one liter of beer each, um, drinking these beers. And then after that, um, I'm going to try and finish this fast because it's getting long. Um, this was when, when we were there, it was during the time of Carnival, which is just before Fat Tuesday. Um, and so during the Carnival time in Croatia, apparently, mostly children wear costumes everywhere, but also adults at night. If they're going out, they wear costumes and like masks. We found one mask on the ground and um, we'd been drinking and stuff so we were a little goofy and I gave the mask to my dad and he was wearing it and we heard this like loud music and saw these people going into this place. So we were like, well, we should go check it out. It looked like, like a nightclub. So we went into this nightclub and my dad was wearing this mask and like um, we were dancing and stuff and I like said to Sheila, my stepmom, I was like, everyone in here looks like they're like 16 <laughs> and she was like, yeah, they look pretty young and then like we stayed there for a little bit and then we went to the bar and Sheila went to order some beers and the guy was like, oh, we don't serve alcohol. This is an 18 and under club. <laughs> so uh, we like totally crushed the 18 and under club. And then after that, we went back to the hotel. <laughs> so that was our um, second full day, our second 
day in Croatia, and it was super fun, kind of crazy. So um, I'm going to end this here, I guess, and I will talk about the next couple days in a separate video because it's getting super long. So I hope you guys are finding it interesting at least. Let me know. Leave a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe also, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.